All right, so we'll get started again. Um, so previously, we kind of did this manual manipulation of data frames, um, manually creating data frames in series. But now we're actually going to go back to where we actually imported our data set, which we, uh, from the very beginning. Um, uh, so now uh, we'll go a little bit into reading data files. Um, so first off, um, we're going to start with this uh, pre-built function called shape. Um, does anyone have any possible idea of what shape could do? Yeah, uh, like the dimensions of uh, your data frame, or like, uh, or like like a row in your data frame. Yeah, exactly. So that'll just give you the uh, the uh, the table dimensions of your data data frame, um, which we can see over here. And we see from our imported data that we have 3,000 rows and nine columns. So um, if we want to actually um, take a look at our data, but we don't want to load in, say we had over a million rows of data. Say we don't want to load in all of that, we just want to take a small subset um, of it to take a quick look at. Does anyone have an idea of what kind of function we could use to in pandas to do such? Yes. Yeah. So, so we can use a dot head here. Um, it's a little cut off in between the in between the TVs, but um, essentially what that'll do is that'll just give you the uh, the uh, top five uh, rows of data from your data set. Now, if we want to actually access like data from a specific column, there's actually two ways you can do it here. Um, one way is just uh, if you have a predefined title already. For example, in here in our in our uh, table, we see we have a column called population. What you can do is you can just do data dot population, and that'll give you that column it's data. Um, another way of doing it would be um, uh, calling it by uh, within the square brackets. Um, they both produce the exact same results. Um, so we can take a look at that here. So yeah, exactly. We see right here that we have the exact same values. It's just two different ways of uh, accessing our uh, data um, natively. So uh, before I move on, um, say like uh, you just, so we just went over how to get the, the whole column of data from a given column that we want to choose from. In this case, we chose population. But say we want to actually just choose a singular value from um, that column. Does anyone have any idea how we can uh, extract that singular value? Is one way. Um, another way is just yeah. You do uh, data and then inside the bracket data and then the uh, the column name and then uh, equals equals over value. Uh, 
Yes, that is uh, in terms of using conditionals. Uh, I kind of meant it another way is say I just wanted to look at a specific, like I don't know what value it is, but say I want to just choose, just extract the value from line 1000, what would I do? Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, so I say over here, uh, oh, what? Yeah, so, um, okay, I didn't write it here, but like, like you mentioned, one way to uh, access it is exactly, I'll just type it out. It's just doing data.population um, and then doing a square bracket, which is just going to get us our index of it. So from there, we can see uh, we got the value of our first one. If we wanted to get a thousand, we just type in a thousand, and we get our value there. Um, in terms of actually indexing in pandas, um, to select uh, that is uh, oh, to select all the data from our first row, including all the columns, we can use this thing called iLock. Um, and uh, we write that as data.iloc and just choose the index of the row that we want. So let's say we want row 10 and we get all the uh, data from that specific row um, includes all nine columns. So there's also another thing in pandas that's called lock, which we'll get a bit into later. But essentially, they perform, uh, they um, produce the same results um, as iLock, and essentially they are row first, column second. Um, it's as opposed to our native Python that you guys might be used to, where in which in that case would be column first and row second. So this is a kind of a question. Um, you guys can actually just try out these uh, functions and uh, that I wrote here, and uh, just let me know if you guys can see any difference between these two. Does anyone, does anyone see any difference between these? The index? Yeah, but like uh, in the return value. Like that would Is that what it returns for you? So essentially, they're the exact same. Um, one is just passing through uh, using a slicing. The other one is just passing simply a list. Um, with obviously with large amounts of uh, um, of row numbers, uh, obviously we don't want to use the list version because uh, no one wants to type from zero to like a hundred thousand. So obviously, you're going to use the slicing in that case. Another thing that I'm going to talk about here is uh, you might see that we're all we all have um, um, uh, you guys are all familiar with slicing in Python I assume maybe yeah so um, you know in slicing we can also use negative numbers so negative numbers also apply to this um, it's just doing the reverse case um, going from back to end um, so we can just do um, take the um, from the end we can take the 
uh, first five from the end, essentially, if we just do negative five and we just uh, study the language. Okay, I didn't type it in. And we see from here we have our last five rows of data um, from the end. Um, very similar to how it works in Python. Not too much to be covered here. just the specific columns and specific rows, your first part would be what rows you want. So I want row 0, 1, and 2 of column 5. So if you look at the output, we have rows 0, 1, 2 of the column 5 from our data set, which was the housing data set. So that's a big thing. You will be using that in almost every single thing where you have to like get specific columns or rows of data, so like if you only care about like what's the population, what's like the tax, income, whatever your data set is, like if you only want that region only for like let's say between 50 to 100. So this is like the most useful thing for that because yeah, it's just straightforward, you just put in the numbers. So uh, it's good to make a note of it. Another thing we can do, uh, other than iLog, so we can use log this time, and uh, we can do something called label-based selection. So here we can do, do just do label.log, and say we want to select the, uh, say we want to select the uh, tenth, row, tenth row of data from the population column. get that. Um, and then uh, while you guys are taking a look at that, we can have a quick uh, two, three minute exercise where we're going to, uh, where you guys can try, uh, say someone wants to access the 2000th to 2050th uh, row of data um, for the longitude. How would you guys go about that? You guys can try that out as an exercise. Two thousand to two thousand fifty of longitude.
affected our print both of the columns oh. at the same time. By doing it on the column, but it turns out it does work. Oh, okay. Okay. Actually, let me try something. I think you can do that. I'm not sure if this is a Okay, now what if we want, let's say, 50 to 100 of longitude, latitude, and median interval? What do we, how do we do that? One table from 50 to 100 of longitude, latitude, and median interval. How do we do that? Yep. Sure. Let's try that. So uh, let's do that. Uh, can you like just say your answer out loud? Uh, can you say it out loud? So 50 to 100 as how? The row index. The row index. Colon. On 50 colon Yeah. Yeah, so what's the list again? Uh, latitude, longitude, and medium income. Is that what we needed? Is that what we needed, yes or no? Yeah, so that's right. So we can see how powerful this simple command is. We can get any row, any column, just by one line. So that's something to keep a note of. Everyone good? All right. So, uh, yeah, like he mentioned earlier, uh, what's the difference between iLock versus lock? So, iLock is just conceptually simpler than lock. Um, it ignores our data sets indices. Um, essentially, when we're using iLock, we want to treat it like a very big matrix, essentially a list of lists. Um, and then uh, we'll just index into a certain position that we want. Um, on the other hand, we have lock, and essentially uses the information in the indices to do its work. Um, and since it's likely the case that data sets have meaningful indices, it's usually uh, easier to do things by using lock. Uh, or I yeah. So is it impossible to use like for field names? Let's try that. What is it? You can try that. Um, it's Let's also up on the board. Exactly. So okay. ILOC stands for index location. So this is for your indices. You filter it by your indices. So if you go up here, we'll see that for our column names, we use five. Uh, this one. So this is for ILOC, because we're using indices for our location. 
For log, that's just location. You can use directly your field names, and you can see that here. And you'll get an answer. Cool? Actually, before I get into assigning data, um, we'll do a few more um, cells here where we're going to run over some conditional um, selection. So let's say I want to find, uh, I just want to see if uh, all these rows, I want a bool. I want to return a bool and I want to see if um, there's a, what for each row, um, will the population be above 100? So we can take a look at this. Um, you guys want to give it? You guys can give it a shot. If I want to uh, find uh, all the populations where they're uh, greater than 100, what should I do? <coughs> you guys can try it out and just let me know, and I'll type it out. So let's think about that for a second. What information do we need, and what output do we need? That's one way. Um, does anyone have a more optimal way? Yeah. I can't hear. You can use a pool and index. Yeah, that's correct. So, um, do you want to give it a shot on how you might do it? And then. Uh, I can't hear. Okay. 
So we see from that you're actually giving me you're actually giving me all the data. But um, what if I just want to see the exact um, um, values that are greater than 100 in the population? So that's close. We see that we're taking all the rows in our data data set that gives us, that has this condition, right? So what if we only want one field in that, yeah? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we right. see why that difference is a thing, right? Because you're trying to use this boolean for the whole data data set in the previous example. Now you're just filtering it to the population field, and you're just filtering it on that singular column. All right, is everyone good with this example, though? We're going to try another example after that. I'll, uh, I'll just type out the next example here, um, or exercise, sorry, and uh, you guys can take a look at that if you've already completed the previous one. I tried doing this as a list, but it, it just gives you an answer. Mm -hmm. So, what is, what is the process of oh, the data yeah. to the data frame? How do you want to get the two rows, two columns, and then build the base of that? Yeah. Think about that. Because you are using a data frame, right? Which is just a two dimensional array, basically. Mm -hmm. So, you need to filter out columns, and then you need to filter out rows. So, those are your two. And let's think about how we can do that. So yeah, uh, if you guys finished the previous one, make sure to try out this next exercise right here. Um, essentially, I want uh, you guys to produce. Okay, I want you guys to produce. Um, uh, I want to see all the rows of data where the population is above 500, non -ex non inclusive, and I also want the median house value to be below 30,000 non inclusive. So give that a shot. Um, if you have an answer, just raise your arm and then we can see if, how it goes. Thank you. 
Did you type and or did you use ampersand? Oh, and. Okay. And what did you say for the mean and house value? This is what you did, right? Yeah. All right. Let's see how it works. Is that exactly how you did it? No. He used the, the word and. Oh, he used the word and. I thought you said symbol. Is that what you had? Another one. I mean, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see it. Oops. Which one? Another one. Closing, not opening. Oh. Here. And then opening. No, no, no. You need another opening. Here. Yeah. Is that it? Okay, yeah, just come, come, just come. There's a better way to do that. Does anyone else have another idea to how to do it? If you want quantities, you can just remove the embassy doubles. No one, oh, what? Wait, you want the entire row, right? I want the entire row of data. So just data, square bracket, uh, round bracket, that of population, Close bracket, ampersand, then open. 
All right, yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, we have our entire row um, where, uh, we're, actually we only have one row that satisfies our conditional, where we have our population greater than 500 and our median house value below 30,000. Oh. Yeah. Just a Because I think if you put the data dot long, then it will display everything. Like, yeah, the very first thing. Um, but in this case, uh, yeah. That also does it. Because uh, you're essentially, um, we're not, like, log here isn't necessarily needed because we're not specifically looking at uh, specific columns that, that we want um, for our data. We're just looking at a general case, so um, log isn't exactly needed here. But, um, so, this next part, I'm just going to quickly skim through, just go through another few functions that you guys can also use. Um, another function we can have is uh, um, is in function that is pre-built. Essentially, what we can do is we can just do data unlock. Um, let's take a look at the population. Um, if it's in a given, uh, given list, let's say, 809 and 500. We get all of our rows of data where the population is either 809 or 500. I can see that here. Another pretty useful function that we'll, we'll come across much later. Um, you'll see a lot more of it next week uh, or next session. Um, will be the is null, null, if I spell it. This function will essentially give you all the rows that are null. Um, in this case, our data is already clean because we're just using sample data provided. So we don't have any um, um, rows where population is null. Um, in the in the in the data visualization workshop next uh, next workshop, you guys will actually be fully cleaning um, raw data, and this will come in handy. Um, all right. So we've just been kind of manipulating data now. Um, but like, we haven't really gone into how to actually assign data if we want data um, in, a, for example, a new column. Cool. So one way of doing that is you can just create, like name a new column. Let's say we just want to name it location. And let's just assign a single value to it for now. Let's just call it California. From that, we see that we have a new column called location, and all of our values are Cali right now. Um, similarly, if we want a column that we just, uh, um, we can also iterate backwards just for index, um, just uh, as an example for iterating over values. Um, essentially, you'll just use a range function in here, and uh, it'll just produce all a range of uh, numbers for you. Um, if you really want to create another column with the index, like that'd be very, that'd be just creating enough, like creating a range from zero to the length of the uh, the uh, data frame in terms of its shape. Um, this, this stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so just a refresher of the range function. What we're doing is we want a range of this length. So whatever the length of your uh, size of your list is, 
going to zero and the step is minus one. So that when you're starting at the top, you're going all the way to zero with an increment of minus one in every step. All right. Another cool thing with pandas is we have a, lot, a couple ways of doing summary functions. Um, one of them, for example, is describe. Um, you guys can try running that. And uh, once you guys see the output, let me know if you guys are able to explain what the output is giving. Like, what are those um, specific statistics that are being provided to us from this describe? So does anyone uh, want to tell me what count stands for? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, exactly. Just the total count. Um, anyone want to let me know what mean is? Sum of all? Yes, the average. Um, that's exactly it. Essentially, just yeah. He mentioned. I think I couldn't hear exactly, but yeah, the sum of all the entries, um, and then divided by the total count, of them, which is your average. Um, STD, not the. <laughs> a little different, but uh, it's called standard deviation. Anyone have an idea exactly what we uh, how it's uh, used? Yeah, exactly. Just uh, taking a look at how dispersed um, everything is. And then min, I don't think I really have to go over. Um, hopefully, you guys all know min and max. Um, and then, does anyone have an idea what 25%, 50%, 75% represent? Yeah. Quartiles? Yes, there are the quartiles. Um, essentially, if you look at a distribution, um, if you guys have ever seen a distribution, it will be um, just 50% at the very center and then you'll have your 25% on the side. Um, but um, yeah, you guys will learn a little more of that if once you get into upper year, st upper year statistics. Um, but um, pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Um, some other useful functions we have, obviously we can find the mean, there's a mean function. Um, there's a unique function. Um, uh, which will give you a list of all the unique values in that specific column. And then we also have value counts, which uh, shows you how often um, values will appear in the data set. We can take a look at that here. So we see that population of 870 appears seven times, and then it keeps going down up until the smallest one, which is 46, population 46, and that only appears once. Um, now we get into a concept of maps. Um, so essentially a map is a term for a function that takes one set of values and essentially just maps them to another set of values. Um, so when dealing um, with uh, data, we often have uh, like the need to create new representations from existing data. Say we have you know just want a single table, and say we want to manipulate some way to get another single ta another table with that values, but we want to manipulate some way to get an extra few columns um, with respect to some of the previous data. Um, then we have to use a bit of the mapping, um, and yeah. So from our example. We can see that uh, we have the, uh, um, we're taking the mean, the population mean, and then we're subtracting that from all of our um, populations, and we're creating, uh, yeah, so uh, we, sorry, we have the population means, we're subtracting that from our uh, p-value, which is our population, and uh, that's how we're kind of manipulating that uh, field. Um, do you, guys, do you guys know what a lambda function is? Yeah? No? No? Essentially, it's just, uh, it's, a, it's just like an unnamed function that you use in one line um, for uh, um, a one line. Essentially, it's essentially just a one line function. So essentially, what we're doing is 
this is a new function call. You have every P in this population. So you're basically going over all the populations and P is your variable for that, just like a for loop as I. And for each P, you're changing the P to be the P minus the mean of your uh, or, uh, population. So every list entry would then turn to whatever it was minus the mean. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's why you make the population map to P minus or the mean. That's just how the function works. Yeah, and then there's an alternative, uh, and then there's another, sorry, there's another function called apply. Um, in here, this code, we're actually doing the exact same thing. Uh, we're trying to uh, subtract the mean from our general pop from our population for each row. Um, so I want you guys to try and run both of these, and uh, tell me uh, what you guys see a little bit different between both of them. And instead of Cali housing, you might have to use data. As yeah, a yeah, sorry about that. Does anyone uh, have an idea of what could be different between the uses of map and apply? Like what you get for an output? Yep. Instead of just a call, it's the entire chart. Yeah, so exactly. So the map function essentially it just uh, returns you a new series um, where all the values have been transformed by um, our given function. And then apply it essentially will just give you the whole data frame. Yeah, so if you want to know a little bit more of the stat statistical part of what this function is actually exactly doing, essentially we're just subtracting the mean from each data point and essentially that's kind of called centering, uh, centering the data. And essentially we're just shifting the data so that the new, be new mean kind of becomes zero and uh, whereas, uh, but in the same time our variance also stays the same. Um, and this is particularly useful in uh, standardization and variance calculations. Um, something uh, we will probably, this, especially standardization, we'll cover um, next workshop and when we get more into the cleaning and uh, preparing data for our data visualizations. All right, and then some more functions we have are group by and sorting. Um, Especially these uh, you'll come across quite often when you're manipulating data for your data frames, preparing for data viz. Um, these are pretty important. Um, group by is exactly by its name. Um, essentially, you're just grouping a population by the counts of population. Um, and then, let's, if we take a look at the first line of the sorting, um, say like I'm uh, like I'm really rich and I want to find a place to stay. Um, where it has the highest um, median house value. So then we'll run um, that line, essentially um, taking a look at the, uh, since we're doing ascending fault, we're, doing, uh, we're taking a look at the highest value, uh, median, uh, median house value, um, where we can purchase our house. Um, and then say I'm poor and I want to find a place with uh, the least population for the most minimal price, because I don't like being around people, then I can run the second line, where I'm essentially just sorting the values by the median house value and population.
you have filled it out or are falling behind a little, since we're a little short on time, what we're gonna, you guys can uh, take a look at this uh, again. Um, it will be posted on our website, all these uh, slides. Um, so I'm going to quickly go over the, this, this next part, which is uh, just the types. Essentially, if you want to check a column for a specific type, you could just do um, how you would normally call a column, like data.population, and you just call it dtype, and they'll produce, and I'll give you the type of that column. Um, if you do uh, just in general the whole data frame, if you do D types, it gives you the types for every single column here. Um, yeah. Um, and then this one I kind of covered earlier. If you want to check if there's any missing data, you do is null. Um, if you want to replace it, then we can do uh, fill NA with uh, some other value. So it's not missing. What? So, uh, like I mentioned, if you have like a column, if you're creating, let's say you want to create a new column, right? But if you just create a new column and it's just full of nothing, um, but you need it to uh, like have some values or else uh, some mutations that we learn on later on will not be uh, be able to actually uh, work. Um, you can fill it with some random value. Um, you can fill it with, uh, for example, uh, a default zero, or you can fill it with a string called unknown if you're particularly looking at strings, um, um, if you're planning on the future of mutating it so, um, so that strings are in it. There's um, another, also another case, like let's say you have a data set that contains like a list of incomes and you have children in that data set. Right? So you probably won't have like access to their salaries or whatever because they probably don't have it. So there's no information there. That would just be NAN or not a number because we don't have any information for that. That's generally like the uh, data that we uh, assign it. So to clean that data so that we can actually operate on it, because not a number you cannot operate on. Right? That's just NA, that's nothing. So to clean that data what you can do is you can do fill NA which just goes over all the elements takes whichever is uh, not a number and then fills it with whatever you put in. So if you want to work on like data that's say income, you can just go through all of the children incomes, fill an A and put a zero there because you don't need that, but you can still operate on that data set later on. There. So that's like kind of the use case for fill an A. Alright, uh, and then getting into some of the renaming and combining. So uh, if you want to rename, um, if you want to rename a column, what we can do is we can just go uh, use the rename function that's pre-built. Um, so we can do rename, and then we can do, oh, let's just say population for the city. So we have to specify what columns we want to rename, because you can also rename several columns at the same time. Um, in this case, where you want to rename population, let's just abbreviate it to pop n. Um, and if we run it, we can see that data now has pop n instead of population. Um, typically, sometimes when you import data, you'll have um, weird and wacky kind of uh, column names. Um, so typically you want to rename them to be a little more understandable um, when you're coming back to it and you're not coming across, you know, Q123 and you're renaming it to like a certain question name, for example. Um, so that's the use case for rename. Um, and then we also have concatenation. So say you have two, uh, two, two you're pulling, importing two data sets and they have, um, um, and you want to like smush them to all together. Um, if they have the, and then, so you can run a concatenation on them. And uh, how that, how a concatenation will work is uh, you can do uh, data, or you would have to pull in more data. Um, so we can just pull in another one, just pull in the read, uh, the uh, train data set. So let's just take this and copy this path. And uh, and we can call 
is just data two. And let's say we want to concatenate it. And we see that now that we have both of them concatenate together, essentially they're just smushed together. Um, um, and then, so that's like just concatenating. So we're not considering anything, we're just smushing both data sets together. Um, say we want to join on a specific index. In that case, we want to use a different um, function in which we, it's called just join. Um, and we, we just uh, join both of them. And we can choose, uh, and it, say they have same, the same column names, right? So in our first data set, we'll have um, lo longitude, and the same one, the other one, we have longitude again. So we want to do uh, some suffix, uh, provide some suffix for it. So we can do L suffix for the left suffix. Let's just call it, um, let's just add on a test. And then for our right suffix, um, Let's add on a train. So we can differentiate between both uh, both columns of data from separate data sets. And when we run it, we see that, okay, we have longitude test. That's our column from our um, test data. And in correlation, when we join it together, we also have, um, at the end, we'll have longitude, we'll have longitude, uh, we'll have longitude train as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's just for some uh, notation purposes, um, for ease of reading when you're dealing with these uh, larger data sets. Um, if you didn't follow along uh, exactly with the, this uh, coding part, they are again in the slides. Um, and then lastly, um, getting started on a bit of data cleaning. Um, it's just simply a function called drop na. If you ever have any um, any function like missing functions, I mean sorry, missing values in a column that you don't want, you can just do drop na, and it'll drop all those uh, rows of data where um, na occurs. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is particularly important when you're cleaning uh, when you're cleaning data for, for example, preparing for a model. Because sometimes in a model, if you have a large amount of um, na values, then um, your specific model that um, that you're applying might not um, might not run as well because there's just so many NA values. So uh, in those cases, we want to drop NA um, to uh, limit such cases. And uh, that concludes our uh, first uh, workshop here. Um, this directly kind of leads us into the next workshop where we go into more the normalization of data, um, which leads then into the data visualization. Um, so make sure you guys show up for that. Um, if there's any further questions about specifics uh, about anything I covered today, um, I'll be staying around along with my team for a couple extra minutes, and uh, you guys can come chat with us probably outside there. Um, also, before you guys leave, make sure to scan all three QR codes. Um, we do have a sort of attendance form. Um, it, don't worry um, if you don't. Uh, you're, I mean, that's actually pretty strict because we need you here for at least four out of six. Um, workshops to be actually uh, continue, uh, accepted into the second part, which is the project-based part. Um, so make sure when you guys come here, you guys actually uh, at least sign the attendance form. Um, we also have a Discord. Uh, make sure to join that server. If you have any questions, you can ask them in there. If you need any access to content, you can also ask them in there. Um, if, uh, if you have any friends who are interested in joining, you can uh, let them know to join this Discord. And then uh, we can see if we can figure something out if, uh, if there becomes spots available. Um, and make sure to follow our Instagram because uh, we have a lot of different events, not just the ML Bootcamp um, that, that will be happening this year. And uh, yeah, it will be a great time um, and learn a lot.